Wow, what a day, what a day. The Colts shook up the NFL world on Monday as they fired head coach Frank Reich and replaced him in the interim with former Pro Bowl center Jeff Saturday. Yes, that Jeff Saturday. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Colts. Let's get to it. You are Locked on Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide, and they have a special offer for our listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Locked On. This is Jake Arthur alongside Zach Hicks. We could use some better help today, as you guys probably can as well. Uh, You know the two of us from HorseshoeHuddle.com, of course. Today, we're going to give you our thoughts on Frank Reich's firing, tell you what went wrong, how we got here, and then what we're thinking about Jeff Saturday as the new interim head coach. So, (laughs) Zach, Frank Reich, on the surface, going into this year, you'd say, seat's a little hot, they have to do something. But after the this season has just been such a letdown. Like right. he's an offensive minded head coach. This offense just has not it's been non existent regardless of the quarterback. Matt Ryan got him a little spark, but he's pressured too much to be able to function long term. Yeah. What what do we think? What's your instant reaction to this move? Yeah, I mean, look, we, we knew that Frank Reich's, you know, his his clock was ticking the second that they traded for Carson Wentz last year. When that trade went down, I mean, Chris Ballard made it known to everybody that that was Frank Reich's guy. That was Frank Reich's move. Frank Reich wanted Carson Wentz. And then when that trade failed, you know, that's when the seats started getting really warm for for Frank Reich. Now, I'm not going to say that all offseason we thought he was going to get fired halfway through this season, but we knew that this was a make or break season for this team and especially for Frank Reich because if they didn't turn it around following – his guy at quarterback, the failure of his guy at quarterback last year, we knew that, you know, Frank Reich was going to be the guy who was going to pay for it. You know, uh, the, the building blocks were there that Frank Reich was definitely going to be the guy out. And uh, yeah, when, when this season started spiraling, I mean, we're at the point now where we're past spiraling with this season, this like the locker room is definitely lost. I mean, nine Hines requested a trade out because he knew it was time to move on. Uh, the locker room's lost there. There's just poor effort, poor performance on the field. Uh, His offense, you know, Frank Reich's offense, which has typically been pretty good under him, is just an absolute disaster. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I agreed. I would agree with firing him midseason. I think that's, you know, I think that's only for extreme cases. I I just wouldn't really do that midseason. But, you know, it was going to happen after the year regardless. I mean, we've been talking about it on here for the last month. I know we even did an episode where we talked about head coach replacements for him because, uh, we knew it was coming after the season, but yeah, man, it, it wasn't too shocking. I was kind of shocked that Jim Ursay fired a head coach midseason because he's never really done that before. I think in his 30 years of owning the team, this is the first time he's fired a head coach midseason, which again kind of shows how serious he is. I mean, they they fired or benched someone every single Monday this month, or you know, the last like month now. So <laughs> it's kind of what the Colts are doing now. But yeah, man, I, I don't know it. It's, it's tough because I, I don't really think he was one of those extreme situations where he warranted a firing midseason. But again, it was going to happen regardless. So it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you know, I, I like Frank Reich. I think he's a great dude. And I think he did some good things with this team. But yeah, he, his time definitely ran out here in Indy. And it started with that Carson Wentz failure of a trade. And, and it kind of just it spilled over into this season. And, and yeah, it, it was definitely time for, for a change there, head coach. Yeah, I can't say I'm overly shocked because, of course, things have gone so awry. And again, right. being an offensive minded head coach for his side of the ball looks so bad. And for this team, there's there are only questions right now, no answers. And even with this firing, I think you and I are both in the same boat, you know, especially being, you know, a midseason thing. This doesn't fix much of anything. 
No. Uh, perhaps you could have gotten a little juice if Bubba Ventrone was your interim guy because he's just that that youthful, energetic guy. I think if if I think if the locker room was going to gravitate to any of the candidates, it maybe would have been him. Uh, but again, you bring in Jeff Saturday, someone who they have no ties to really. Uh, he he's consulted with the team, but he's not someone who's been in there day in and day out. So it's super weird for that for that to be the case. But this yeah. season is still gonna stink, guys. Like all they yeah. did was get ahead of their head coaching search, and you know they fast forwarded things a couple months. Basically, is is what they did. Things are gonna still be very rough. Um, the order of events makes this troubling because you fire Marcus Brady last week, you fire Frank Reich this week. Uh, Brady wouldn't have been a great, a great option anyways, but now you have no one on the staff who was called offensive plays, uh, which how do you work around that? Because like something has to happen legitimately with how, with how cartoonish this last month has developed is Matt Ryan, the most logical offensive coordinator the rest of the season. Well, I think so. I it's, it's well, crazy, but maybe. Well, no, it, it should be Scott Milanovic. Uh, Scott Milanovic called plays in Jacksonville uh, for a very short amount of time. It was it was like, mm-hmm. I think it was when uh, Hackett or someone got fired as offensive coordinator there. So he did call plays for like half a season. Yeah. And then he was a head coach of a CFL team. Uh, so I, I think he might have called plays there. I can't remember if he actually coached a whole season, though, with that CFL team. It might have only been like one year. Uh, so he mm-hmm. has called plays before. I do think... Scott Milanovic is the most likely and the very obvious answer here. But honestly, again, like you said, with how insane this season's been, it would like nothing would shock me. Bubba Van Trone might be calling the plays. I have no clue. I, I really have no clue who's going to be calling uh, the plays because it's just been that absurd a season. I think, you know, we need to take a second here and just talk about this dysfunction. Like, like again, I'm not going to go on rants. I'm sick of this team right now and, and, and everything that's going on. So it's really not worth going on rants about everything that's wrong with this team and this roster and this front office and everything. But I mean, it's absurd. The stuff that we've seen this year, I mean, week seven comes and they have benched their quarterback. They just traded for in the off season. You know, they gave him seven games with behind a porous offensive line before they decided to bench him for something else. That's unheard of. That doesn't happen, especially a a guy of Matt Ryan's pedigree, you know, 15 plus year starter, a former MVP. It took a team to a Super Bowl. Now I'm not saying he was playing good football, or great football by any means, but benching him after those first seven weeks was absolutely absurd. And then you get one game of a six round pick, uh, you know, a former six round pick quarterback in his first career start and you're firing the offensive coordinator, you know, and then you get one game of that and you fire the head coach. Like that is like, this is a next level dysfunction. This is yeah. like, just, just, this is just like, you know, like a Roman emperor back in the day, beheading everybody before <laughs> the end of their reign. Like, this is literally what it is. You're just like, you're just going down the chopping block. Now, who, who gets fired after the Vegas losses next week? Who gets fired after the Minnesota loss? Who gets fired after the Dallas loss? Like, they isn't, still have... Isn't it bonkers how Chris Strasser still, like, Chris Strasser has <laughs> outlasted Marcus Brady and Frank Reich and Matt yeah. Ryan right, and Naeem right. Hines. That's nuts. <laughs> Matt Pryor will outlast all of them, though. That's the. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but anyway, no, like, this is, like, I know I'm laughing about it, but this is, like, absurd dysfunction. And I've it seen is. dysfunction before. And and then you just add to that dysfunction by bringing in an ESPN analysis or analyst or whatever who has only coached high school football. Like, we're going to get mm. to that in our last segment today. Like, don't get me wrong. Jeff Saturday, I think he's a great football mind. I love hearing him talk. He's awesome on ESPN. This is this is crazy. It's absolutely crazy to bring in a guy who last played for your organization 10 years ago. You know, yes, he's an ESPN guy, but like he hasn't coached in the NFL before. He hasn't coached even at the college level. And you're bringing him in to be your interim coach when he has nothing connected to the rest of the team. Now, maybe he's just here to evaluate the roster for Ursay, but even if that's the case, you're bringing in an ESPN analyst or analyst or whatever. I cannot get that word right. You're bringing in an ESPN analyst who used to play for your team over a decade ago to evaluate your roster. Like it's just, it's next level dysfunction. It's next level dysfunction. Now I'm not saying yeah. that any of these moves have been absurdly wrong or, or horrible moves, but it is insane to see this in a three week span, just fall guy, fall guy, fall guy, fall guy, scapegoat, scapegoat. And then jumping to the next thing that just still doesn't make any sense. And not even giving a chance for your, your, 
weird move from the week before to to play out. Like there's there's no chance. It's literally we're gonna make this rash decision, and we need it to fix everything, or someone else is getting fired. Like if Jeff, how long does Jeff Saturday last? One week, two weeks before he gets no. fired? Like, <laughs> like, like I don't no, know. He, like, see, he holds a special place in Indy's <laughs> heart, so he might get yeah. a, an unlimited pass. Right, but again, I just I, I don't know. Like where does where does this stop? You know, that, that does it even stop with Chris Fowler? Does 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 Jim Irsay fire himself at the end of the season? Like, I have no clue. Like, it's just next guy, next guy, next guy, next guy, and I, I just don't when don't know when this dysfunction is going to stop. And and maybe this is just me talking as a frustrated person who can't have a relaxing Monday in, <laughs> in the past month now. But like, man, like, am I the only? Like, I don't know. You guys can say in the comments here. Am I crazy for thinking that? This this last three weeks has been absolutely insane. Like I've never seen this happen before, and in my you know twenty five years or whatever of life, my twenty something years of following football, uh, my my six seven years of covering the sport, I've never seen anything like this before. It's it's absolutely insane. Um, I don't know. It's crazy. I, I had no no other words for it. No, I, th- I think you're right. It's it's insane, and it makes me think that re- legitimately at this point anything is possible. Like. Anything we said, you know, they they could do this, but they won't because it's midseason or because there's too much money tied into this, this, this. All bets are off. I can't say what I think they'll do anymore because none of us know for sure. Whew. Yeah, so we're, we're going to kind of tail you around to where this all went wrong. But first, we want to go ahead and tell you about one of our favorite sponsors, BetterHelp. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. I'll be honest, sometimes I struggle with balancing everything in my life uh, with three jobs, which includes covering this cartoon show of a football team and a family. Sometimes I think it'd be convenient for life to come with a user manual. Unfortunately, that does not exist, but BetterHelp Online Therapy is as close as it gets. Therapy uh, Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. Personally, I've not been in therapy, but I've definitely considered it, and BetterHelp would be my very first stop if I was going to. Uh, Having the options that they do and being able to do it all from home, online, and being able to find the right therapist, you know, kind of sifting through people to find the right fit, that would make a big difference to me. Uh, Therapy can help with whatever ails you, whether it's depression, anxiety, trauma, or in my case, just often being overwhelmed with things. Uh, Everyone deserves to feel their best, and BetterHelp makes it easier to get that started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All you have to do is just fill out a brief questionnaire and match yourself with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new one anytime. It cannot be simpler. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash locked on. That's BetterHelp.com slash locked on. All right, Zach. So just a few years ago, everyone would have thought this thing's on the right track. Frank Reich gets the most out of his quarterbacks. The offenses are always somewhat productive given their circumstances. New quarterback every year, yada, yada, yada. What went wrong, man? Why are we here today? You know, again, I think it ultimately comes down to that decision prior to the 2021 NFL season. You know, and again, I'm not I'm not trying to make Carson Wentz the scapegoat. He, it's, the, the issue is not him. It's the decision to go get him. You know, mm-hmm. that decision is, you know, like we see this every time. This is how general managers. This is how head coaches fail in the NFL. If you make a wrong decision on a quarterback, you know, it, it could be taking a quarterback high. It could be making a huge trade for a quarterback. That is how your tenure ends. If you make that wrong decision. And they made that really wrong decision. Carson Wentz was not the answer for this team. It was evident, you know, halfway through that 2021 season uh, that that he was just not going to be the long-term guy. He was not going to be the answer for this roster. And it really was, you know, that's kind of where the whole Frank Reich era went down. You know, when that Carson Wentz trade didn't work out, you knew that his, his clock was ticking and he was probably towards the end of his tenure with the Colts. So, you know, I know we can go into the details about this offense this year, how lifeless it's been, and how how terrible they've been in a lot of eras, areas. And, and I know you have the numbers to go with that there, Jake. But, mm-hmm. you know, it really goes back to that Carson Wentz trade. You know, the second that, that again, the second Chris Ballard went out there at that combine interview after making the trade and said, like, 
This was Frank's guy. He definitely sold me on it. You knew that that trade had to work out or Frank Reich was going to be gone within a year or two. And, you know, again, I, I wouldn't have expected a midseason firing this year, but I knew for a fact if they didn't make the playoffs this year, Frank Reich was going to be on the way out. And and they're definitely mm-hmm. not making the playoffs this year. So he was absolutely going to be on the way out. So, uh, yeah, that, that Carson Wentz trade led to, you know, another – veteran trade because that you know again the clock was ki- was clicking or the clock was ticking for Reich and Ballard so they felt like they had to go get another veteran and then mm. that that trade failed even worse and that's where we are now I mean it, it really all started with that decision after Philip Rivers retired to instead of going young and maybe hoping to get like a Justin Fields or a Mac Jones or Davis Mills or or anything <laughs> like that like I'm not saying that those guys are the answers and those are like perfect quarterbacks but you know those would have been viable options viable young options but when you made that big trade for Carson Wentz you put everyone got put on that timer especially Frank Reich and when that failed you know his clock was just ticking and and, you know we got to the point where it's over now you know and Frank Reich is no longer with the Colts so yeah I mean again we can go into a lot of details about this season and why this season went wrong but it really started with that 2021 trade and and that failure of a trade yeah and it is like a domino effect just like that. And, you know, getting Wentz, that, that whole thing was locked up in February, if I remember correctly, you know, around combine times, slightly before the combine. So that, you know, that eliminates you moving forward, like you said, for a Justin Fields or someone. It, you They could have had the ammo to move up if they wanted to. And we know Justin Fields was, was someone that the Colts liked. His, you know, that was Chris Ballard's guy. So that could have bought them a couple years having a young quarterback like that. But instead, striking out in one year on Carson Wentz and striking out in seven games with Matt Ryan, that's a huge stain on the record there. And, you know, there there's being competitive, and then there's just being flat-out awful. And the Colts have become just flat-out awful. The defense, we think, is pretty good. But the offense holds them back in so many ways and keeps them from beating teams they used to take care of. They would lose to good teams or they, you know, Jacksonville would have their number. They would have their curses, but they would always take care of the the middling teams that didn't really scare you at all. They're not taking care of those teams anymore. The Patriots, not that good. I think we saw early in the game, they could have handled them if they had any sort of offensive rhythm. The Commanders, they could have beat them. Uh, who, who'd they lose to three weeks ago? They got Maybe. shut up by the Jaguars, dude. They got shut up well, by the Jaguars. Sh- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got shut up by the Jaguars. They got swept by the Titans. They These were games they could have won if they were playing like they were at this time last year. Like it, it, right. They've really gone gone down, you know. They rank in the bottom half of the league in pretty much every meaningful stat. They're 24th on third downs and 31st on fourth downs. 27th on overall offense. 30th in rushing. 31st in the red zone. Tied for 31st in turnovers. 30 second in scoring and 30 second in sacks. That's so bad. <laughs> That's a team with Frank Reich as, as the head coach, Matt Ryan at quarterback, Jonathan Taylor, who just led the league in rushing. That's that's who your running back is. The receiving core has not been the Achilles heel that people thought. It's actually been the most consistent part of the offense. The offensive line is tanked. So how they got here is just totally baffling to me. You know, they, they've had zero points on their opening drives, which is bonkers. Uh, countless no-shows. I think they've had 10 or fewer points in three games. They won that Broncos game barely. What, they have 13 points or something? Like, mm-hmm. Just just, uh, just real gross. Not great. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I want to add to that is uh, you could tell the locker room was lost the last couple yeah. weeks. Like, it's just mm-hmm. the locker room's completely lost. And when the locker room turns on a head coach, you know, you know, like what Chris Ballard has always said, the locker room knows and – you know, the locker room definitely knows it was time to move on. And and the only thing I want to add to this, because I know this is a Frank Reich podcast and we're not talking about uh, Chris Ballard in this one, but he should not escape criticism for this. He is, no. Chris Ballard is just as, or just as, uh, you know, in, uh, as fault as, as Frank Reich is. Like it's, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely go to that. I know we've talked a lot about Chris Ballard on this show and stuff like that and how he has played a big part in the failures of this team, but. Uh, this is just a major organizational failure this entire season. So uh, yeah. I don't want, I don't, I don't think it just should be on Frank Reich or Marcus Brady or Matt Ryan. Like there's a lot of guys that need to to answer to this one, but we're going to talk about the Colts newest head coach here in a second, Jeff Saturday. 
<laughs> Again, I'm still a little bit I still can't believe that. that. I can't, like, <laughs> I was driving, and I saw the breaking news thing, and I saw the top of Jeff Saturday's head on my phone. I was like, you have got to be kidding me if this is what yeah. I'm about to really read. Yep, yep. And before we talk about old Jeff Saturday, the Colts' newest head coach, we want to tell you guys about prize picks. For Monday Night Football, Price Picks has Lamar Jackson at 61.5 rushing yards and Alvin Kamara at 60.5. Now, I'm pretty tempted to take the more than on both of those numbers there. You've heard us talk about them before, but it's my favorite way to make picks on game day. Just pick two to five players, and if they go score more or less than their Price Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. PrizePix offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, and even more. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So make sure you guys are jumping on that right now. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKED ON. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, price fix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for instant deposit match up to $100. Jeff Saturday. Jeff Saturday. I it doesn't make any sense. There there is like again, unless unless Jim Ursay is completely on the fence about Chris Ballard and saying, hey, Jeff, come in here and evaluate this team. And if you think this core of guys can actually win anything, you know, I might keep Chris Ballard. Unless that's the case, I have no answer for, like, I don't even know how this popped in anyone's mind to to hire Jeff Saturday to be like, like, yeah, maybe he comes in and he he lights a spark. But, like, this is a guy with no, (laughs) no connection to anyone here, like, no connection to the staff. No connection really to many, like to really any of these players outside of just stopping in with ESPN. And he's never really been a head coach outside of what Hebron, Mount Hebron uh, Christian Academy. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how this became an option. Uh, and like you said, it, this is very, very shocking to me. I, I don't really understand it. No, it's so. From what I've heard so far from from people, it is literally just to get an outsider's view on the roster and how things run, which seems uh, kind of wild to do just in the middle of the season. Because like you said, like with the premium they put on the locker room and they value what their players think, you're telling your players, hey, we're bringing this guy in to lead you that none of you have any ties to, like none of you... Ma- he maybe knows the offensive lineman. I don't like, I don't know it. It's just so crazy to expect these guys like a DeForest Buckner, Stefan Gilmore guys who their year is being wasted essentially to buy into this. Like it's right. crazy. And I mean the, the tinfoil hat part of me says that, you know, Jim or brings in a beloved figurehead from here in Indy. Cause if you're looking at a Mount Rushmore of Indianapolis Colts of fan favorites, Jeff Saturday is probably on it. Uh, I mean, this th- that era of Peyton Manning football has been very much romanticized, rightfully so, uh, right. here in Indy. Jeff Saturday is absolutely beloved. So, you put a beloved figurehead at the forefront of the rest of the season to take the lumps, whatever, speak to the media multiple times a week. And in the meantime, you have no expectations of winning anything. So, you have this beloved person that everyone in the city loves while you keep losing and get this better draft pick. It's really hard to see it as anything other than that while while Saturday also gives you the scoop on what's wrong with the team, what needs to change, what have you. Again, though, an ESPN personality to tell you what's wrong with the team and what needs to change. And, and then the other thing is, did you see Zach Kiefer's tweet or report earlier? That Which this, one? I, I did see. He said that this is more like an audition, you know, that Jeff Saturday could very much be in their future plans. And if they turn it around under Jeff Saturday, he becomes the head coach going forward. It's like, right. That's crazy. What? (laughs) What? That literally is is the first thing I tweeted was what? Like, Like, I have no, nothing else to say about that. Like, again, it's not like the Colts don't have 
former head coaches on their coaching staff. They have Gus Bradley. They have yeah. John Fox. They, you know, Bubba Ventrone, by all accounts, could just be a, a rah-rah guy that comes in there and like Dan Campbell and, and bites ankles and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. Like, you have guys there that you could like. And then, yeah, again, there's so many people saying like, oh, an unbiased point of view. It's like, look, these guys are going to be coaching for their job. They're, if Jim Irsay asked them straight up, what do you think about this roster? They wouldn't hesitate to throw someone under the bus or say something bad if it means, you know, to justify why they were so, like, you know, the roster was so bad. So, like, I don't know, but this, <laughs> this is absolutely insane. Again, I grew yeah. up a Washington fan. I covered Washington football. And I'm not saying that this is as scandalous as anything I had to cover or watch there with Washington, but this is like next level dysfunction, even compared to what I've seen. It, it is, it is insane to bring, like, at least when the Raiders brought in some, some TV personalities, it was in the off season. So those guys, can, yeah. inst- you know, like, that's the like, thing. My- this is so <laughs> nuts. Like this is mid season. You have a new head coach, someone these guys don't know. You don't have really an offensive play caller, or at least you're throwing something together. If it's Scott Milanovic, they would be lucky for that to be the case, because otherwise, what are they going to do? Like, this is nuts. Like, it just is. And luckily, so the the Colts, uh, Chris Ballard, Jim Irsay, and and Jeff Saturday, they're speaking tonight. They were going to speak at 6 p.m. Eastern. It got pushed back to 7.30, so... I, by the time you hear this, I don't know if it got pushed back again or not, but like, I'll be right. at the facility here in a bit. Some of these questions are, I mean, they're going to be asked whether we get the valid answers to them, who knows, but wow, there's a lot of questions. This is, this is where it's great to have someone like Greg Doyle. Greg Doyle lives for this. He thrives in this because he's not oh, afraid. Oh, great. Greg yeah. Doyle Greg's is not, coming. He will, yeah. Yeah. He, he <laughs> will, he will strut up to Chris Ballard and he will say like, this is also your fault. Like he will just say that in the press. He won't even ask a question. He'll just say, this is your fault too. And then he'll walk out <laughs> like, <that. laughs> this is why you need guys like that. But man, like I'm so I like, this is why I can never be a beat reporter. And I'm glad I'm not a beat reporter. I don't even know what I would ask. Like my first question, would, I'd probably raise my hand and just say, why? Or, <laughs> like that would just be it. Just be like, why? Like what, what, what sense does this make? Uh, look, I'm not saying that Frank Reich shouldn't have been fired. By the end of the year, or even right now, like fire him, that's fine. But Jeff Saturday, <laughs> Jeff Saturday, why not just bring in Peyton Manning? Like, if you really wanted like one of those like figurehead guys, just the why not Peyton Manning? Like, I don't. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. Uh, it I, yeah, I can't even. It can't even be like the Sam Ellinger starting like news or whatever because we can't even say they're gonna be fun bad. They're just gonna be like, like this is gonna just be terrible the rest of the year. Like, I don't. I don't know. They're going to score more than 10 points the rest of the season. Like, yeah, this is like, think of every football movie you've ever seen. And it's like the low point before something awesome, <laughs> like the water boy before Bobby Boucher turns it on. Like, <laughs> we're going to have farmer Fran on the sideline. Like there's the cheerleaders going to be drinking with the mascot. Like we could be entering that territory. Yeah. Now guys in the comment section, here's my challenge to you. Who gets fired after the Las Vegas Raiders loss? Put it in the comments below, which staffer or writer or mascot, you know, whoever, because there has to be somebody getting fired next week, too. Like, who who is packing up their bags next Monday? Uh, put it in the comments below and, and have fun with it, guys. But, Jake, I don't know if we have much more to say. Like, again, Jeff Saturday, no. the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Um, man, <laughs> I, don't, I, have no, I have no words, dude. It's... No, no. Yeah. So like I said, uh, the, the Colts brass will be speaking this evening. We'll have more for you, for you guys after that. Um, so yeah, definitely stay tuned. Horseshoe huddle as well. I know, uh, Zach, Andrew and I, we've all got stuff in the chamber coming down. So we'll have more on that. And then we'll eventually this week get to this Raiders matchup. I think, I don't know. Maybe. It may be just be a total afterthought. I don't know. Yeah, do you guys even care if we talk about the upcoming games anymore? <laughs> like, should we just pivot to draft stuff and like who could be the head coach and next year's free agents and and roster review stuff? Like, do we just start our off season now? You guys let us know in the comments as well. I know I'm asking a lot of you guys in the comments today, but make sure you guys are following us on social media at Jake Arthur NFL, at Zach Hicks 2, and at Locked On Colts. 
all on Twitter. Also, subscribe to our show on YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcast. And thanks again for making Locked On Colts your first listen every day. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports Today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights that only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow.